Connor, thank you for joining me. York City tomorrow should be a good game. Yeah, another tough test. Um, they, don't, they haven't scored a lot recently, but haven't conceded a lot. I think they've pretty much scored the same amount as they've played and conceded the same amount. So they've been in every game. There's been a goal in it here and there wherever they've won or lost. But I believe they've drawn 10 of the last 15 games. So it shows that they're always in games. And that's a testament to, to Ards how organised he has them. Yeah, when we played York back in September, we walked away with all three points. How much of a different challenge do they now pose five months on, not only in terms of their togetherness as a squad, but also given the manager, Neil Ardley, who I know you played under at Wimbledon, as we know, his bags of experience at this level had only been in the job for three weeks when we played them. Yeah, it's a massive difference. Um, when we played him down there, I think he might have been his fourth or fifth game in charge and we spoke to him after and obviously he had a lot of work to do. Um, he managed to get some players out, get some of his own players in and probably stamp his authority on a bit more since then. So having watched them, they do look a bit more fitter, athletic, physical than what we did prior. Um, I think he touched on that in his own pretty much interview yesterday. So we're expecting a much different test. Um, down there, they sat in a lot in the last previous game, especially against Southend and other teams have come out and been a bit more aggressive. So he's obviously a bit more content with the physical attributes of his team now. And it's a much different test. And obviously, as I said, I've played under him, so I know what, what quality of manager he is. So... Chance that a long reach with a club, the better they'll be because he's that type of manager. And you can see within that they've been very organised of late. So it'll be a much different test tomorrow, I think, yeah. We come off the back of a disappointing one that loss against Aldershot this Tuesday. What's the mood been like in the camp this week and what were the main takeaways for you from the game? The uh, mood's been fine. Listen, we're still in a brilliant position, still, still all on our hands. So there's obviously a lot of games still to play, but we know what we need to do. Um, we've got our points tag and the gaffer always touches on about. So... Listen, the performance obviously wasn't to our usual levels, but credit to Aldershot, I thought they were excellent on the night. And um, to be honest, obviously with our injury problems, you can see obviously a bit of leg in his creeping in, but that's going to happen. But listen, we're rotating as best we can and we'll use the whole squad. And I think if you look at our performances prior to Aldershot, we had three or four brilliant performances that probably didn't get all the results we deserved. Um, but listen, we'll just go again. Fair play to Aldershot, the better team than night one. Having said that, at nil nil, we managed to defend that box brilliant. I thought the togetherness and work ethic was brilliant from all the lads, and the defending was brilliant. And then we actually had a massive chance on about 80th minute of steady where we probably could have nicked it on another night. But listen, that's the way football goes, fine margins. But I'd say our performance overall didn't warrant any points. But we'll move on. It doesn't dampen the mood at all because we know we're having a brilliant season and the lads are, are still right up for it. Three new faces in the squad, Adam Thompson, Gavin O'Donker and Luke Freeman. How are they settling in and what are your thoughts on each of them? They've been brilliant. Brilliant. Um, obviously, Tom, we knew we were always looking for that experience in our half. We've been trying to get him for the last year to 18 months. Um, I used to play him back in youth team days, so we managed to stay in touch, so that helped. He's been a brilliant asset for us in organisation experience in the back line. Um, we were done Donkor again, someone we saw in pre-season when we played against him, so we knew what attributes he had. We, it's one of them we monitored all season with Oxford, and finally the chance came for him to get, us on, get him on loan, so we bit the opportunity. So he's done brilliant, two goals in three games, can't ask for more. I thought he'd done brilliant on Tuesday night with limited service. I thought he made some, some clearances, good balls, and he fought well, and... Gave the defenders a tough time, to be fair to him. Um, so he's been a great asset for us, especially with it coincided with Nicky being out for a little bit. So that's helped us. And then obviously Freeman's obviously got quality of this. We saw that on the snippets that we've seen of him so far, especially against Files second half. I thought he took the game away from them, to be fair. When it was 2-2 and in the balance, I thought his, his class got us over the line there. You'll come to the Hive Stadium tomorrow at the back of a one-all draw with Oldham on Tuesday. They've just announced the signing of midfielder Alex Hunt on loan from Grimsby. Knowing their squad and the quality within it, tomorrow's going to be a really tough test for our lads. Yeah, listen, as we touched on earlier, they've been in every game, so a draw against another playoff chasing team shows how organised they are and how tough they are to beat. So Alex Hunt, I know very well. Obviously, a Grimsby technical player in midfield, so he'll bring lots of quality for them into what they've already got, to be fair. They've got a lot of good players, so... Uh, I believe in his interview he touched on Dipper Wack and Yemi being back fit, who's obviously one of the better strikers in the division. So they pose a lot of threats. They're not just coming to sit in or they haven't been doing that. They, they also pose threats on the break. I mean, you look back to Gateshead, they played them back to back over Boxing Day in New Year's, and they took four points off them, who we know are one of the better teams in the division. So on the day they can beat anybody. And to be fair to Ard, he's got them really well organised. As you know, we put out a huge announcement on Monday uh, with our intention to move Barnet Football Club back to Barnet. We obviously know how much this means to our supporters, but from a playing and coaching staff perspective, how important is this for the club? Excellent news. Um, I think you, you can see it with the reaction on Twitter and all the social platforms, how the buzz it created. Um, and it would be amazing for the club. Listen, if we get back there, obviously we know attendances will probably go up and obviously that increases the support for the lads. Um, when, there's, when there's bigger attendances and bigger crowds, it tends to drive the performances more for the players. So you can, as I said, you can see the buzz on social media. So if that can happen, it would be amazing for the whole football club. 
we have to get the hive rocking tomorrow. How much does this benefit the players when the B Army is in full force? This is it, just said it. So when they're here, when they're cheering the lads on, it gives them an extra little buzz. So if the lads, if the fans can get behind us, listen, it might drag an extra percent of every player. So that would help us massively. We've been all tired this running, especially with a lot of people on the injury table. So any fans that can come down and cheer us on always helps the lads spur them on. Brilliant. Thank you, Confucius. Cheers, Dan. Thank you.